Good morning. How's everybody doing? Oh, that's great. Glad to hear your voices and see your pretty faces. Today we're going to be continuing a uh, series that we have started on. It's called Puzzled. And you're probably wondering, what is puzzled? Well, what puzzled is, is things that we endure that we don't quite understand. What we don't understand is, what we're going to talk about is forgiving others. How do you forgive others when people have done you wrong or said wrong things about you or uh, pointed the finger at you for something that you didn't do? Family members have uh, turned you away, maybe put you in a certain spot, but we have to forgive others, which is very difficult. I struggle with it. I have a hard time forgiving people. But I also have to look at what God has did for us and what God is continually doing in our lives, and that is forgiving us. So we're going to look at three benefits for forgiving others. Three benefits for forgiving others. Forgiving others because it pleases God. Instead of asking, why should I forgive it's their sin, not mine. Realizing God command, commands us to forgive. What that does when you forgive them, it frees you from all the pain that you have endured. Jesus also taught us to pray. And in the prayer that we always says is, forgive us our sins. In the same way, we forgive others. That says a lot. Forgiving others. I know it's puzzling to you, but we ought to forgive. Matthew 6, 14 and 15 says, If you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your father will not forgive you of your sins. That's funny. That's strange. That's puzzling. Forgive somebody because they've done you wrong. And to forget about it. I don't know about you, but I know when somebody does me wrong, I ain't going to forgive you just that quickly. It's going to take some time. Yeah, I know I'm a sinner saved by grace and I ought to be doing this, but it is very puzzling. It's hard. You're at your job and you up for this big promotion and all of a sudden this other person goes to the boss and hey, psh, 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 says something bad about you and knocks you out of the candidacy for a job. And you find out that this person did this to you. Do you forgive them? You should. You should forgive them. But it's very hard. But it's going to take some time and much soul searching before feeling and ready to let go. But ultimately, we forgive because holding on to unforgiveness isn't godly. Forgiving others because you have experienced God's grace for your sins. God's grace is, shapes the way that you treat others. Through Christ, we, re we receive God's grace for forgiveness, which we don't deserve. No matter what you have done, God's grace wipes away all your sins. That's great. That's very reassuring to know that we are sinners and God forgives us for everything that we have done. Whether we think we are right and we know that we are wrong, God forgives us. The Bible says that no one is right 
not even one of us. Can I be right one time? No. None of us are right. We all continue to sin. We all continue to do wrong. All of us do it. There's no exemptions. Well, you know, that was just a little bit. That was this time. That was that time. I was young and I didn't know what I was doing. He still forgives us. Once we understand we are truly sinners, we realize there is not much difference between the one who caused the pain. The one who caused the pain to us. There's no difference. Forgiving others for your own good. Well, how do you forgive somebody for your own good? If you refuse to let go of the hurt, you've tied the other person to yourself. A person puts it this way. You've given that person freedom rent inside of your head and your heart. Now, personally, I only want myself inside of me. I don't want to give nobody else no opportunity to come inside of me. So, in that, you have to let it go. You say, well, it's kind of hard to let go of this. They said this. They did this. But you're giving that person the freedom to live inside of you. How does that equate? Let me just give you a quick demonstration of what it does to you. Walking down the street and minding your own business, and all of a sudden that person that has done you wrong pops up in front of you. Now, guess what? It triggers. Everything that person said about you or did to you, it triggers something. It reminds you of this. But do you want to be free from it? Or do you want to continue to hold on to it? Well, me, myself, I want to be free of it. I don't want to hold on to nothing. Consider the cost of not forgiving. The energy, the emotions, the hurt. You lose sleep behind this. While you're hurting, the other person that has done you wrong they didn't forget all about you. <laughs> They're home, sleep, minding their own business. <laughs> now, let me tell you my personal struggle with this one, forgiving others. Now, some of you might like it, some of you may not like it, but I'm going to tell you this. I'm a Dallas Cowboy fan. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what happened last week. You saw the game, right? <laughs> well, I got upset at Jerry Jones, <laughs> Jason, and Scott. I ain't forgiving them cats. <laughs> I don't care what you say. I am not going to forgive them for what they did to my players and how we played. Now, some of you, I know y'all got teams and y'all winning and y'all looking good and everything like that. Ah, but my team, them Dallas Cowboys, I cannot forgive the owner. I cannot forgive Jason Garrett and Scott Linehan. I have a hard time with it. So what do I need to do? Trust me, family. I'm praying. 
Matter of fact, I'm finna go in prayer in just a few minutes. As soon as we finish from here, I'm gonna start praying because we play later on this afternoon. I got to pray. Unforgiveness and inner peace is impossible when bitter festers. The infection grows and damages our relationships with others. Forgiveness offers us freedom to move on so we can continue living. Well, you know, when I was coming up, uh, a lot of us, when we were kids, we used to go outside and play, right? And when we would go outside and play, what would happen? You would fall down, get a scratch, get a cut, whatever it may be. That would happen to us. And you would run inside the house and you know, back then I didn't have peroxide, or they had peroxide, but I never found the peroxide. <laughs> they always found that green alcohol. Oh, uh, yeah, I know what I'm talking about. And pour that green alcohol on that sore, that scab, and, you know, it would burn. It would hurt. But after a while, it does something. It starts to heal. So, and when it heals, it builds what? A scab, right? Well, me as a young boy, being the way that I am, I would always want to pick at that little thing. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure some of you picked at it too. You pick at it, pick at it, pick at it. And what would happen? That scab would come off. And when that scab come off, guess what? It comes right back to being that sore again, once again. That's what it means by festering. You know, you pick at it and then, then it starts to heal, and then you go right back to it again. Don't fester with it. Leave it. So it can heal. So you can heal. I know I'm probably talking to you, you're probably saying, that don't work, because this cat did me wrong. They said this about me. But you have to let it go and allow God to heal. I'm glad you're asking me these questions in your mind because I know you're probably still puzzled. But let me go a little bit further and we're going to see what the Bible says about forgiving others. I'm going to talk a little bit about a young man by the name of Joseph. Now, if you don't know who Joseph is, I'm going to tell you and I'm glad you're asking me about Joseph. <laughs> Joseph was the youngest son to Jacob. Jacob had 12 sons. And out of the sons, he was the youngest one. So his father loved him more than he loved his brothers. He would do more for Jacob, I mean for uh, Joseph than he would for the other boys. And those other boys did not like that. They did not like that their fathers, that they were all their father's children and kids and boys. But they didn't like that he had a favorite. So they wanted to kill him. So one of the brothers by the name of Reuben stepped up and said, nope, we can't kill him because then blood is going to be out on our hands. So they end up selling Joseph into slavery. When they sold him into slavery, a caravan came by and picked him out of this pit, and he went into Egypt. There he went into Egypt and lived. And the Bible says that he lived there his entire life. And while he was there, he went through more hell than you can ever imagine of. He was accused of uh, sleeping with Potiphar's wife and uh, he, uh, the cup, somebody, he stole it, but he didn't steal it. He was going through all kind of stuff. And then, on top of that, his brothers tried to kill him. So all that was on Joseph. But while they had all that in place, God had another plan. And in that plan, Joseph 
came out of all of that and became second in charge of this land in Egypt. Second in command, he was the vice president. He was the vice president, the equivalency of a vice president. So we're going to pick up the story here in the 15th verse. And it says, but now their father Joseph was dead. I mean, their father was dead. Joseph's brother became fearful. Now Joseph will show his anger and pay us back for all the wrong we did to him, they said. So they sent this message to Joseph. Before your father died, he instructed us to say to you, please forgive your brothers for the wrong they did to you. For their sin in treating you so cruelly. So we, the servants of the God of your father, beg you to forgive our sins. When Joseph received the message, he broke down and wept. Then his brothers came and threw themselves down before Joseph. Look, we are your slaves, they said. But Joseph replied, don't be afraid of me. Am I God that I can punish you? You intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many. No, don't be afraid. I will continue to take care of you and your children. So he reassured them by speaking kindly to them. Now that says a lot. Here it is. He's in the position of power and authority after all that has happened to him in the past. Now his brothers are on the scene. I'm pretty sure they were, when they found out who he was, because the Bible clearly states that Joseph recognized his brothers. But they did not recognize him. You know, from that small age to a grown man, uh, well, you know, when I, <laughs> you know, gain a little weight, lose, you know, it just depends. So Joseph was standing there and saw his brothers. And when the brothers found out, boy, you talking about being scared. Because now, guess what? All the things that they did to him and the way his life turned out, they was fearful that he was going to punish them. That he was going to say, uh, guess what? Now I'm second in charge. I got control. I'm going to get you. Matter of fact, I'm going to get all of you. You tried to kill me. I had this hard life. It's all because of you. But there's one thing that I really love about this that stood out. It's called grace. Sometimes extending grace to someone that does not deserve it is the greatest thing that you can ever do. Just like us. Grace. We're all sinners, right? We all sin. We accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior. And guess what? When you accepted him, he gave us that grace. He said, guess what? I forgive you. That is something that puzzles me to this very day. All the stuff that I do wrong, but God still grants us grace. He's constantly forgiving us every time we mess up. We don't just mess up one time. We mess up all the time. And all he does is says, I forgive you. It's 
four steps we need to begin forgiving others. So this is something that I think that we ought to try to do. We ought to really try it. The first thing that you can do is confront the hurt. Confront the hurt. Even if the offense is small, don't ignore it or deny it. Deal with your pain. Deal with the hurt actively. Otherwise, the pain will stay hidden deep inside of your soul where bitterness can fester. That is something that we ought to know, that we ought to do. Even if it's small, don't ignore it. Now, I didn't say go outside and start screaming, yelling, hey, I'm hurting. <laughs> I'm in pain over here. You caused this. No, you don't need to do that. Don't confront it like that. But confront it within yourself. Forgiveness begins with admitting you've been hurt. But want to be free from this agony. So if you want to be free of it, you don't want it to hurt anymore, you've been hurt. Say it. I'm hurting. Pray for the person who hurts you. Pray for the person who hurts you. Now, that is a little different for me now. I'm an ex-military guy. Did my 20 years, retired, and I had some cats to say some things about me and to do some things. So instead of crying out, ask God to repay them of their sins. Pray for divine blessing for your offenders. The deeper the hurt, the more difficult this will be to pray. So you just, you just have to pray for them. You know already accept it. Okay, I've been hurt. Now instead of retaliating, you pray for them. You know if God fights your battles, you know that when he fights your battle, he doesn't fight in the way that we fight. We fight physical. Somebody do you wrong, what's the first thing you want to do? Be honest with it. Punch him in the face. <laughs> Somebody hurt you, you want to punch them in the face. I would. But it depends on how deep it is. Because if it's deeper, you know, like I said, I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm trained. I've been trained. I've been conditioned by the army to do certain things to people. <laughs> so, so to prevent me from doing that to them, I'm going to get down and I'm going to pray for them. Ask God to heal your wounds. Ask God to heal your wounds. Now, you know, wounds and things doesn't normally happen overnight or instantly. The deeper the wound, it's, the harder it will be to release the offense. You might have to pray for a longer period of time. When it hurts, you know when you get injured, when you hurt your leg or your arm or whatever part of your body, oh man, it hurts. And it hurts for a longer period, especially when you get older. <laughs> when you get up in age, you know that pain lasts a little bit longer. You go to the doctor, ace bandages, pills, all the stuff, it still is there. The same thing with if somebody does you wrong, 
you have to pray for it more than one time. You pray in the morning, pray in the afternoon, and you pray in the evening. You continue. You just have to continue to pray. That's the only way it's going to go. That's the only way it's going to get healed, by praying all the time. You don't pray one minute, Lord, uh, forgive them, and it's over with. Because tomorrow, tomorrow you're going to see that person. The day after that, you're going to see that person. That family member that has done you wrong, you're going to see them at Thanksgiving coming up, probably Christmas, New Year's, and all these different holidays that we got coming up. You're still going to see that person. And every time you see them, you just, I'll be right back. <laughs> I got to go pray. Step outside and go pray. <laughs> Come back in, see him again. Oh, Lord, I got to turn right back around. <laughs> Y'all go pray. So, brothers and sisters, we ought to pray. Ask God to heal your wounds. Let go of the offense. Let go of the offense. Someone has hurt you and ultimately sinned against God. This is the issue in Jesus' own physical torture. As you know, our Savior Jesus Christ came to this world to redeem his people. They accused him of not being who he said he was. After they did all this, they took him to court. They beat him. They tortured him. They whipped him. They did all these terrible things to him. Then they took him and placed him on the cross. They nailed his hands. They nailed his feet. They stuck a crown on his head of thorns. He bled. He suffered. He, endured, he was going through everything possible. But he said something that was very, very forgiving. Jesus said, Father, forgive them. For they don't know what they are doing. That says it all right there. That Jesus died for all of our sins. He endured. He was tortured. All those things. And guess what? He still said forgiveness. He still asked for forgiveness. Following Jesus is not easy as children of God. We must forgive to live in fellowship with others. Forgiveness does not make the other person right. It makes you free. Let me say that one more time. Forgiveness does not make the other person right. It makes you free. So if you want to be free, give it to God. Ask for forgiveness. Forget about it. Well, you say, it, it's more than that. No, it's not. Go back to what Jesus had gone through. Go back to what Joseph had to endure. And see if what has happened to you is more than what they had to go through. If it is, which I know it's not, it can be forgiven. God loves you. And he wants us to live on this earth free. Let's bow our heads. Dear Lord, thank you for the gift of forgiveness. Your only son loved us so much that he came to earth and died for our sins.
so that we could be forgiven. Your mercy flows to me despite my faults and failures. Help me demonstrate unconditional love today, even to those who hurt me. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.